Welcome to the online dog handling 101 training for the PAWS San Diego stand down event. First we're going to talk about some volunteer duties and expectations for this event. So what is stand down? Historically stand down was used in times of war giving combat units safe and secure time to rest and recover while other units assumed watch. Today this event offers time for our homeless veterans to remove themselves from the combat of the streets and allow the community of San Diego to stand watch so they can receive the needed services and rest. Over 200 stand downs take place across the nation each year, San Diego being one of the largest in the nation with over 1,000 participants and 3,000 volunteers. So where do we come in? PAWS is on site for the weekend to take care of the many participants' pets while they attend the event. Volunteers will help out with handling as needed. So let's start off with some introductions. First we have Heidi, who's the volunteer training coordinator for the San Diego campus. She's going to be offering optional hands-on leash and crate trainings before the event. And then we have Tracy, who's the administrative assistant for PAWS and she's going to be the point of contact for the stand on event. So this is what your training plan is going to look like. You have the dog handling 101 training which you are completing now. Then you will have your optional hands on leash handling and crate training before the event and the day of training on site where you will learn what to do and how you can help. So getting ready for your shift, you want to make sure that you have your name badge and your uniform. Your uniform is going to consist of your volunteer t-shirt, long pants, closed toed shoes, and we just want to make sure that you're prepared for rain or shine as this event will go on, um, and also to bring minimal items with you as we do not have storage space for personal items. We will have treat bags for you to carry with you. If you have your own treat bag, please bring that, but we will have Ziplocs available. And we will have poop bags to make sure the dogs are being cleaned up each time. Um, when you arrive for your shift, you will check in with Tracy, who will get you started and answer any questions you might have. We want to point out, just to be prepared, you may be helping with animals, paperwork, or both during your shift. So keeping that flexible mindset is important. And then also just to keep that calm presence throughout the event. This event will have busy times and downtime as well. So just making sure that you're staying calm to reduce the stress of the animals and the participants. Let's talk a little bit more about equipment and safety. So every dog should have a collar on at all times and leashes are going to be kept clipped to the collars at all times, even when in the crate. The end of the leash is going to be left outside of the crate, so it can be picked up before the crate door is opened, and you will see more of this in a video. Um, and then if the dog comes in with a harness on, this harness is going to be kept on the dog at all times, unless the owner removes it and puts it back on themselves. For safety, we want you to always be aware of yourself, the dog, and your surroundings. Um, make sure to listen to your inner voice. It's usually always right. If there's any time you feel uncomfortable at all, don't push it. Um, the staff and other volunteers are there to help, so just don't push yourself and don't step out of your comfort zone. And then if you notice any odd behaviors, medical issues, or accidents, please report them to the point of contact at the event immediately. We also want you to watch out for children. Um, they do want to pet the dogs all of the time and we really don't know how these dogs get along with children. So we just want to tell them to politely um, move aside, we're on a training session, and then just to keep walking. Uh, we want to be aware for other animals we don't know how our dogs are going to react to each other. So again, avoid them. You can either turn around, go another way, or put your hand out and tell them that your dog does not like other dogs. And then just be aware of other volunteers with dogs. Um, make sure to give each other space and just avoid all contact between dogs. Your word of the day will be yield. 
So if you're yielding to all people and dogs, then you will avoid all possible problems that can occur. Um, you're going to save people and the dogs from getting hurt. So take a look at these two photos and think about which one of these photos shows the better dog handling techniques. So in the first photo, the handler is aware of their surroundings and they have minimal distraction. And then in the second photo, they're on their cell phone, they're drinking coffee, um, completely unaware that the dog is using their shoe as a bathroom. So we just want to really reiterate the importance of staying aware of your surroundings at all times during this event. So now we're going to talk a little bit about working with dogs that have a variety of owners. Um, we will be working with people from many different backgrounds and walks of life and we really want to remember that we are here to support them. So a very important point to remember throughout this entire event is that these are not shelter dogs. These dogs have owners. So you're going to be working with owned dogs that understand their owner's expressions and mannerisms very well and they're not going to understand you nearly as well. Um, they're going to be in a strange environment and being handled by strangers. We're going to be working with bonded dogs so you might experience some separation anxiety um, we just want to keep in mind that many times the dog is only going to want to look for its owner when they're away. So um, just being aware of that. And then bottom line, these animals already have an owner. So we do want to let their owners do the handling if they can. Uh, we want to encourage the owners to come and check in on their animals during the day so that the animal does get that time with the owner. And this is going to reduce the stress of the pets and minimize handling time for us. So a little bit more about handling. We want to remember that we are only here to handle the animals to go to the bathroom. Um, and this is if the owners are not able to. We do want the owners to take their dog out if at all possible. Um, we also don't want to be bringing the animals out of the crate to try to comfort them. Um, they're the most safe and most often more calm in the crate than outside, especially if their owner is not around. We need to remember that the dog is not going to read us as if we are their owner. They're going to read us as another dog. Um, so leaning over them, looming, restraining by grabbing their collars, these are all threats and may be a cause for retaliation. So we really want to give the animals as much space as possible. And yes, the most normal thing for us to do is hug. Um, but in dog language, this is threatening, offensive, and rude. So before we get into the right way to handle these animals, let's take a quick look at the wrong way. So as you noticed in the video, that dog was not excited to see me. Um, we definitely don't want to approach these dogs yelling with our hands in the air. Um, we want to remember to always let the dogs approach you. So you're going to kneel sideways to the dog to let it approach you. If they do approach you, you can pet them under the chin, under the chest, on the side. If you get any signal at all from the dog to stop, just respect that decision. Keep in mind you are a stranger to that dog. Um, if they look anxious, we just want to remember that they do have owners, and especially at a large and crowded and noisy event, 
they're probably going to be more comfortable in that crate with some downtime. So let's talk a little bit about crating. We do want to remember that crates are not a bad thing. Like I just said, they do allow the dogs to have downtime and have their own space. And this does help us to um, avoid overhandling these dogs. So when you're asking a dog to go into a crate, um, they're not always going to want to go in right away. So some techniques you can use is to toss a couple of treats in, maybe put some wet food in the back of the crate, um, just making sure that you're keeping hold of the leash until the door is shut and letting that very end of the leash hang out of the crate door or the bottom of the crate. Easy as that, right? Now, like I said, not all dogs are going to be that easy to get into the crate, but you did notice that Heidi did toss some treats in there. Um, the dog went into the crate and she left that leash on the dog and outside of the crate for easy access to get out. And so when we do want to get the dog out of the crate, um, we do want to look for any sign of avoidance. Uh, when we're at the crate front, we can toss the dog a couple of treats, um, show them that we're there to be friendly, and then making sure before we open that door to get that leash in our hand and secure it. Okay, and so you may have noticed that Heidi grabbed that leash securely in her hand before she opened the door, and when she did open that crate door, she gave that dog space. Um, she didn't get down and hug him. Um, she's not rubbing her face in his face. She just gave him space to kind of experience that outdoor. And then some more crate crating tips. So we're going to try not to take dogs out of the crates that are stationed right next to each other simultaneously. So an example of this is to take the dogs out of crate number one and then crate number three for their walks and then you can take the dogs out of number two and then number four for their walks. This again is going to allow them for some much needed space when they first step out. So more about leash walking. You want to make sure that you're always picking a dog that matches your abilities and your comfort level. Um, when you do get that leash, you want to loop it around your thumb and lock it in place by your fingers, as you can see in these photos here. We don't want to ever twist, loop, or wrap the leash around any part of our body. Um, and then once you do have that leash in your hand, you can rest your, el your elbow securely and comfortably against your side, and this helps you to maintain control of that dog. We do want to keep in mind that there is a good distance and a bad distance when the dog is on the leash. Um, the bottom line is going to be that a close dog is a safe dog. So just keep that dog as close to you as possible. We do want you to remember that once you take a leash, you are responsible for the physical, mental, and emotional health of that dog. Some dogs are not going to be nearly as comfortable with you as you are with them. Make sure to keep dogs away from each other and watch out for those children. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and email that address down at the bottom there, volinfo at sdhumane.org. And if you are interested in one of the hands-on trainings, please RSVP by email with one of these sessions. Thank you so much and we look forward to 